do you think? Yeah, we should probably just go ahead and finish this up. Let's get some frets polished, some strings on, some setup done. Everything a fella needs for cleaning a cleaning a fretboard. Gonna get it taped up. Make sure they're all level. File them down if they need to be. Crown file the tops. Polish them up. Clean off the fretboard. Get it oiled up. So everything that I'm going to use is right there. Checking the straight on the neck again after it sat for a couple days with the neck on the body not messing with it Neck's all taped off, protecting the fretboard. We just want access to the frets. And we'll check them with a rocker. Okay, for rot steel wool. Good. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is a little Never Doll, and those will really sparkle them up. Now, these frets were pretty good. I mean, obviously, it's a brand new neck, <clears throat> it's never been played, the frets have never been used. <clears throat> but when it comes from the factory, it's got this kind of a, a dull, almost like a coating they put on them. So, you may have some rough spots, and you just want to hit those down. I mean, this one feels really good. But it did have that dull coating on the top, and I wanted the press to shine up a little bit. So this does pretty good. You just take a little bit of it out. Just kind of rub it on there. See, it's it's taking stuff off. So you know, you got the remnants of the steel wool left. You could just do steel wool. Some people just do steel wool. Some people don't like to use steel wool. You want to cover it up, you want to protect it, you don't want or clean it off real good <clears throat> when you're done. You don't want little bits of steel wool, little fibers stuck in the wood. Cleaning the fingerboard, I just use Simple Green. It doesn't have any uh, solvents in it, doesn't have any silicone, anything like that in it. Um, works really good just to get junk off, DNA off fingerboards. That's what on the fingerboard. Okay, linseed oil, not lemon oil. 
without any of those special guitar neck fretboard oils. Unseed oils, you know, it's tried and true. It's for unpainted, unsealed wood surfaces, which is what this is. And we're just gonna protect it with a little bit of linseed oil. It doesn't take a whole lot, you know, a little drop. Right, linseed oil's all on. <clears throat> Getting it nice and rubbed in. It doesn't take a lot. I mean, just a little, a little bit goes a long way, so <clears throat> you don't wanna just, you don't wanna puddling and pooling on your fingerboard. Okay, we're gonna let that just dry for a little bit. <clears throat> and then it's time to throw some strings on this bad boy and get her get her set up and we will be D-U-N done string time D-A-D-A-R-I-O N-Y-X-L's 9 to 42 is what we're gonna put on so what are we gonna need to do this well we're gonna need strings we're gonna need so I'm gonna get the strings on the tuning pegs. Gonna need something to set our string height, our action. Gonna need something to check our radius, radius gauge. Something to check our neck relief with, feeler gauges, and a capo. I forgot that. I'll go get that. Yeah, so let's get some strings on this thing. Strings are on, but there's absolutely no string height. Can't do anything until we have our action set the right way. But all the strings are on. Right, so I got the bass E and the treble E set to the string height. Now we don't have that. It's not that buzzing. They're not sitting right on the frets anymore. So now we use our radius gauge to check the to set the other other saddles to their heights. Yeah, we're pretty dialed in on the radius. Now you know the radius to the neck. We the strings have to match that. They just can't be laying flat. Otherwise, you get that nasty buzz that we had when they're just laying flat on the fret. So, each saddle has to be adjusted. You set the action on the on the the bass E, and then the action on the treble E, and use your little radius gauge to match them all in between. Setting them down here at the saddles. Drop just a little bit on this one. A little 
bit on this one. Yeah, and we're pretty good. Some with new strings. Let's give them a little stretch. Okay, so we are tuned. Now we'll have to worry about, not worry about, now we get to do the intonation. Oh, I still need to check the neck relief to see if I gotta rip everything off here. So uh, let's do that first. Right, neck relief. How much of a, how much relief do we have on our neck from straight? So capo, capo, however you want to call it, goes on the first fret. Fret the highest E string. And let's go to the ninth fret with our field gauges. Let's see what we got. We're at 10 thou there, 12 thou. That means I don't have to take the neck off and adjust the truss rod. We're at 12 thou, between 10 and 12 thou on the neck relief, which is, we're to want a looking down the neck, looking straight down the neck, using that string as a straight edge and you can see I can see a little bit of the relief. Okay, and you want to do that if you can in the playing position. Just like tuning it, we tuned it laying flat. Then we tune it in the playing position as well. Because that's how you're gonna be, right? Okay, so intonation. When you tune it, open string tuning, and then fret it at the 12th fret, you know that thing's almost intonated. Um, you want it to be the same pitch. And I did a rough intonation. I measured from the nut to the top of the 12th fret. Okay, it's a 25 um, and a half inch. And going from the 12th fret to the front of the saddle on the high E side the same measurement Wait, when right. you're in pitch okay it's a little on the flat side that one's pretty on as well um, but with a three saddle bridge it's not compensated so the other the you know the, the the B string will have to be close. It's probably not going to be direct on, or you can compensate yourself and kind of get them in the middle. A three saddle bridge truly never really gets um, a good intonation unless you have a compensated bridge, and this is not. Okay, so I'm going to finish up doing that. Okay, the intonation is done as and it's as close as I'm gonna get with a three saddle bridge. Just checked it flat, checked it in the plane position. Last thing to do is put on the string tree. Forgot to do a couple things. Well one thing, one thing that was kind of important. I didn't set the string height or the uh, pickup height. I have that set in now. It's about 664 off that pickup. That one's a little lower, but that's it. I like the way that one sounds, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So that's where our pickup height is set. And then got the string tree put on. The littlest part on the guitar. So I will get that tuned back up to pitch. Recheck everything. You check the intonation and then uh, throw it on the amp. We are done. We are done. So it's been fun. It's been a learning experience. Um, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. And uh, there may be another build in the future. You know she made me rock and roll.